Uh, but the only way to get saved is to believe it. It only works if you believe it. As he would go on to point out to people, he says, so what's the difference if I believe it or not? Did he die for all men's sins or not? If he died for all men's sins, what difference does it make if I believe it or not? He died for mine, even if I don't believe it. He died for mine. Well, what is the difference? He used to tie them up and go round and round in circles. And in his day, he was an unusual man. But uh, today, you hear a lot more of that kind of thing. That people realize the whole picture doesn't quite hold together. It comes up. <laughs> Unfortunately, it goes by the same name as another controversial subject. Creationism is talked about a lot in North America, at least. And by that, they, they mean that God made man like this. He put him together. But the older meaning of that word creationism referred to the difficulties of inherited sin. As it was pointing out, where is this sin that everybody has that they're born with? And the teaching is, it's on your soul. And you say, where did the soul come from? Did my parents make it when they made me? No, no, no. God makes the soul when the parents make the person and God puts the soul in. So they say, well, then how did it come with the sin? Did God make it with the sin on it and give it to me? I say, no, no, you inherited the sin from your parents. Say, yes, but I didn't get my soul from my parents. So how did the sin get there? How did the soul come with the sin? So some in order to explain that, came up with another thing, which you don't hear talked about too much because it was never popular, but they talk about what's called traducianism, which is to say, well, we were wrong. After all, God does not make souls. The parents make the soul along with everything else when they make the, when they make the baby. And that's how the sin gets planted in there. That's an idea that never really caught on, but that's how people try to explain away this thing. So, in conclusion, what I'm meaning to get at is not to say, I have a whole lot of ideas here, and the idea is to prove that somebody's wrong and I'm right. I'm not even interested in that. What I'm interested in is that people realize there are a lot of questions that deserve to be re-examined. That it's not such a neat, wrapped up case anymore. It needs to be thought about. People give the impression sometimes that they're thinking about it. You know that half of the printing done in the United States is done by just a small group, a handful of churches. Half of the printing, I'm talking about all the paper and ink in the United States is used up by a handful of churches. You'd think that means they got a lot to say. But in all that printing, they don't look at these issues. You see, my point is, even if the Muslim is wrong, somebody has to be able to establish that that's the case. It has to be examined again. We can't just say, well, they always told me that, and this man's smarter than me, so he must know, and leave it at that. We're supposed to finish all things. Uh, the Quran mentions in a verse about one man who was guilty. He was a criminal. What was his criminal act? It says he heard something, and then he didn't check on it to see if it was true. It's a crime in Islam. If you hear something, but you don't make sure it's true, you just let it rattle around in your head, maybe forget it, maybe keep it. What you hear, you're supposed to check on. If it's an argument, go through it yourself. If it's a fact somebody said is in that book, well, then you ought to find that book or find somebody that's seen it. Make sure what he said is true. So I thank you for your time and attention. I'm glad to have a chance to be here. I believe that Time was set aside for some questions, so we'll see what we can do. Suggest maybe if you don't feel at ease standing up in front of a crowd uh, or whatever, maybe you can write a question on a piece of paper and pass it up as well. Sir, it occurs to me that uh, though 
various religious uh, sprang up different times from different countries. They all uh, preach and teach the same fundamental truths. If I may summarize uh, in three words, uh, love all, hate none, we are one. Uh, they, I think, never divided the one humanity into races uh, under uh, various labels. I think they also, uh, the planet Earth as one country and uh, humanity as one family. But under the very guise of the very same uh, religions, uh, under various labels, the followers have divided uh, the humanity into various countries and into various religions and uh, uh, wars and fights uh, are going on. Uh, countries uh, manufacture arms, they maintain uh, military armies, uh, produce nuclear weapons and it seems that uh, Satan is more powerful than God now. I think uh, we have to, it seems that uh, we have come to a cynic uh, turning point, a climax in human civilization uh, that we should uh, Mm. get all the basic teachings, fundamental teachings, uh, the agreeable uh, teachings of all religious teachers and teach uh, them under one uh, title, like World Government Religion, to unite all for the welfare of all and to prevent a, a nuclear war which would bring about total annihilation. All right. <laughs> Just want my comment, all right. Uh, in a sense, I suppose I agree with you right down the line. It's just that I have to qualify that sometimes when when that sort of thing is stressed to say, this is our problem, we have to solve this, so we shouldn't necessarily talk about these other things is often what, what happens to people. They don't talk about these details of theology and so on. Well, it might seem to be a, a good idea, but the, the difficulty concerns... Um, back to the thinking again, that uh, things are all supposed to be one piece anyway. So unless you get some of the important things sorted out, you're not going to function properly in this other project you're trying to do anyway. As I said, uh, I told the story about one man who's a famous preacher who he said there was a certain thing that he just couldn't believe it was true, but every time he preached it, his head hurt because he couldn't believe it was true, but he knew he, it was part of the, what he was supposed to preach and his head hurt. Then one day he promised God that he wouldn't doubt it anymore. And he said, the headache went away. Head doesn't hurt anymore. Well, he disconnected a valuable circuit in his brain. His brain's trying to tell him not so fast. Something's wrong here. So if you tamper with the circuitry and say, now this doesn't make sense, but I'm going to hang on to it anyway, uh, suggesting that influences the processing. The output is going to be influenced by this if, it's not, if everything is not functioning properly. Um, just the thing I mentioned the other day, you can take an elaborate computer and if you sneak around behind and open the cabinet and maybe cut one wire, the thing will still work most of the time. But every once in a while it will spit out some nonsense because you've damaged it somewhere. So it's not necessarily advisable to lump up a lot of things and say, well, these don't matter, we'll set them over here. Maybe a lot of things don't matter, but we've got to be careful which ones we set aside. Say, these things don't matter. Just as if somebody says, well, if God is one or five or seven, it doesn't really matter. No, I, I would dispute that. I think it matters because if you get that wrong, you're going to mess up somewhere else later down the line. But I, I think you probably agree with me there, too. I'm just uh, adding that to uh, what you said, that sometimes people, <laughs> maybe the only thing they know is to say, no, love, 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 you see, and... <laughs> They say that, and you, you have to wonder, do you even know what you're talking about? Love? Love? If I love somebody is when, I, if I see that he's doing something that's going to hurt him, if I love him, I'll tell him, that's going to hurt you. So, uh, sometimes love may mean you have to be harsh to somebody, or, or tell him something you didn't want to hear. But if I say, love, 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 oh, say what you like, I love it, it's beautiful. You may not even be loving the man, you're doing him harm. He needs to hear some advice from you sometimes, some advice he doesn't like. Okay.